This video is going to illustrate the EM Pro, the Employee Training Management software. The purpose of this software is to uh, schedule employees for various tr training and different courses and so on. And to begin with, we'll start by looking at the various setups. Uh, for example, there could be an employee setup, which includes all the details on an employee. There could be departmental type of setups um, where you may want to assign a particular course to an entire department, for example. Um, and then there are courses that would be in the database that you may want to assign to a particular employee to be taken or scheduled. We'll start with the courses uh, element of the software, and you can see that there are two uh, pieces to this uh, particular uh, part of the software. There's a category, like a course category, and then for that course category, you can have various courses. So, for example, we have a course category called quality, already pre-populating in this particular database, and manufacturing would be another category, and and so on. And within each of these, you would have various courses that are associated with this category. Now, for example, let's set up a new category. We'll call it uh, health, health and safety. So that'll be our category, and we'll just click on the insert button here to put it into the list of categories that we already have here. And we'll save that by clicking on the toolbar button up in the top here. So we now have another category that we've added called health and safety. And now we can start entering various courses for health and safety. So to do that, we click on the option button called course. Oops, click on health and safety and then on the option button called course. And uh, within the uh, health and safety, let's say we have a course called, um, um, well, why don't we call it uh, Health, Safety, and the Law, which is something that might be of interest. And uh, this particular course, uh, let's say we, uh, we want to make sure the employee takes this course on a regular basis once a year. Uh, so we have some columns here. One column here is called frequency. And so let's say we put in a one here. And the unit uh, will make that a year. So this particular course is going to be taken by employees uh, once a year. And then another course might be um, first aid and uh, first aid we don't want to you know necessarily uh, make an employee take it over and over again unless something significant has changed so why don't we put in a revision here we'll call that revision one and unless the revision changes uh, that particular course will not be taken um, by an employee however if the, there's a revision in the course then that employee would be scheduled to take uh, first aid as another course. And uh, then the last uh, thing that we might want to add here is um, workplace injuries. And we're not going to, you know, adjust this uh, for revision or for frequencies. Uh, basically, you'll take this course once unless you want to schedule it more than once. Um, and that, that's pretty much it for setting up the courses for the category that we've set up called health and safety. We'll just click on the Save button in the top left corner, and that puts all of that into the database. And that's, that's it for setting up categories and courses. You can add to this, you can remove from this um, as needed. Before we set up different employees in the database, uh, we'll just go into View Settings and uh, go into the uh, area called Employee Detail, which are some general uh, settings that we can uh, put into the system. So, for example, 
Um, there are departments that we can set up for and then assign an employee to a particular department. And there are various things like inactive reasons. So these are lists, these will be drop down lists that will be available once we start setting up the employee. So, for example, if we want to set up a, uh, an additional department, we already have these departments that have been pre populated uh, ahead of time, but uh, let's say we want to set up another department called maybe Office. So we just type in Office here and uh, click on the Apply button. And then uh, inactive reasons, let's say we want to add another entry to the drop down list for inactive reasons. Let's say person retired. So we'll add that to the database and again click on apply. And positions, these are the various positions that we already have in here, but let's say we want to add one more. So we'll add operator. Click on apply. And so these will always be available when we start setting up the employees as drop down lists to assign to a particular employee. In addition to that, we also have some uh, fields that you can set up optionally to add to the system that we don't already have in the system. So for example, if you were interested in storing some emergency contact information about an employee, you would set up a field called field title called emergency contact and uh, could enter whatever you need to enter in there. And so that pretty well uh, covers the additional settings that uh, might be of interest. And the other tabs here uh, relate to things like reports and training and so on. Uh, we'll leave that for now. You can read about that in the user guide if, if you uh, need to. So we'll just close this out and we'll be ready now to go on to the employee setup. Okay, so now uh, we are going to set up the employee detail and uh, we would go to File, Employee and here's where we set up all the details related to an employee. So let's set up the employee. Let's give it an employee ID which will be for example 001 and the last name might be Smith. And the first name, let's say, is John. And the position of this particular employee, let's say they're an electrician. And this, again, this drop down list was set up in the previous uh, segment of the video. Uh, let's say they're an electrician. And let's say the department just uh, for this particular employee might be maintenance. And the hire date, uh, let's say that particular employee was hired uh, May. 15 2017 and the street um, well let's say the address is 55 uh, James Street let's say the location might be uh, New York And the state, let's say, is New York. And uh, let's say the zip code is 10012. Telephone number, let's say, is 212 456 1234. And that's pretty much it for setting up the employee detail. We can also add a picture of that particular employee. Um, and uh, so, and a custom field, if you recall, there was a one particular custom field that we had set up called emergency contact. So uh, let's say there's, a, there's an issue and we want to contact um, uh, John's mother. Joyce. anything else that we want to say about that emergency contact phone number whatever it might be anyhow we'll, we'll go ahead and and also there's some notes that you may want to put in on this employee so why don't we say um, 
uh, review performance after six months from higher date and uh, we might also want to get John to take a few courses so uh, make sure uh, health and safety courses taken okay anything else you want to put in there you can as well these are all free format and we'll go ahead and save this record into the database by clicking on the save toolbar button and that goes straight into the database and uh, now we can add a new employee to do that uh, we just click on the new button up here and that clears out everything and allows us to enter another employee so just quickly just to set up a second employee let's say we set up an employee called um, the employee ID let's say is 002 going along with the same sequencing as before the last name uh, might be black and the first name might be Paul position let's say this particular person is a um, operator and the department uh, might be in manufacturing and the higher date for this person let's say it was uh, February 14th 2016 and we're going to leave the rest of this all blank uh, and we can always come back and fill it in as needed including all this uh, stuff up here we'll click on the save button and so we now we have two employees in the database <clears throat> now to retrieve a particular let's say we had you know many hundreds of employees to retrieve a particular employee at any time there's a find button up here or you can go through each employee alphanumeric alphanumerically by clicking on the right or left arrow let's click on the find button and so it shows you the two employees that we've added here uh, in the listing or we can just type in the first few characters of the employee ID and it'll try and retrieve that for you as well so that's how we find a specific employee and so if we want to go back to employee one for example we just double click on this one here and it takes us back to employee one and that is uh, pretty much how we set up the detail for an employee now the next step will be to assign some training to that employee and we'll talk about that in a moment this segment will focus on setting up various training activities for employees and so before we get into that let's just go back to our courses matrix and we'll look at uh, what we had already set up which is health and safety as the category we notice that for health and safety we set up a frequency which means that if a person is um, scheduled for a health and safety type of course it should be every year from the time they've taken it last then um, there's a course called first aid which has no particular frequency but has a revision so if we were to assign a course like first aid to an employee and there was a change in revision then that person would automatically be required to take that course so let's go back now to the employee detail window um, and in this frame title training there are several buttons here we'll kind of go through each of them as we need to let's start with the assigned button so for the assigned button if we go back to the category called health and safety and we assign first aid to this employee then whenever there's a revision change to the course called first aid this employee would be required to take this course so to sort of check that out we'll close out um, all of these windows and uh, we'll just go into one segment of the reporting part of the software we're not going to spend too much time on reporting in this little uh, portion of the video we'll get into that afterwards but just as a night as I give you a sort of whet your appetite kind of thing let's go and look at the range of those 
training activities that are due for a particular period of time, let's say in the month of July. We happen to be, as this video is being prepared, in the month of July uh, 2017. So let's put in a date range here of uh, July 1st, 2017 to July 31st, 2017. And so now anything that we're interested in will be related to that particular date range. And so, for example, if we're interested in those training activities that are due in the month of July, we could go to this report called Training Due. And we see nothing is due because nothing is due. But if there was a change in, let's say, the revision to the first eight course, so we go back to our courses and we select first aid and we change we change the revision from 1 to 2 and save that now if we look at the training due report because there was a change in revision to the um, first aid course this employee is now scheduled to take the first aid course and it actually picks up the system date of the computer so whenever the training revision happened that's when it's scheduled for this employee to take that course so that's sort of what we call assigned training that's what this button is all about then there's another button here called schedule so schedule could be for such general courses that the employee needs to take with no particular uh, requirement to take it on a particular frequency and also if there are courses that we are required at a certain frequency that would also be under this schedule button so if we click on scheduled here uh, we see that first of all the health and safety first aid is scheduled for what is today's date when this video was made um, but if we go back to let's say um, oh I don't know let's say the person needs to take uh, a quality kind of course and we go to gauge let's say it's a gauge calibration essentials type of course um, and the person needs to take it let's say in August August 15 2017 let's say so this particular course it doesn't you know we'll take it it'll be a one-time deal they'll take it when they need to take it which is August 15 2017 and it'll show up on our list of those courses that are scheduled but in addition to that, we also have in the health and safety area, health, safety, and law. And we want this person to be taking this course once a year. And so uh, let's say we schedule this course for the first time. Uh, we'll schedule it for July 20th, 2017. And so now it shows up in our list of courses that are required. Uh, to be taken so this will be July 17th 2017 I'm sorry um, July 20th 2017 that's the health safety and the law once that course is taken on the date that it's taken we're going to add the system will add one year to that and reschedule this course uh, for the following year so let's go ahead and have a look now and uh, see what's due in the month of July we still have that range built into our system so there are two things actually there's the first aid course which got triggered because it, it's a an assigned type of course when there's a revision change but in addition to that we've scheduled health safety and the law for July 20th 2017 um, now if we close this window out and we go back to the employee and we start let's say we go back and uh, do some training so we would click on this button called completed and now we have to identify what courses were completed so let's say it was health and safety let's let's say it was the uh, first aid uh, course that had a revision revision two so that was completed and the date that it was completed let's say we happen to get to it on uh, july 25th 2017 and there might have been some cost 
amounts associated with it. So let's say it was 50 bucks and maybe four hours. And whoever may have given the course, it was some external uh, training company and, and whoever that person, the trainer might be, you can enter that information. Um, and you can also link in an external document. If there was some sort of document provided, like a PDF file, you could link that in. So we'll, we'll go ahead and save that by clicking on apply. And so now this course um, it should not be in our scheduled courses anymore, the, the one for uh, first aid. And in fact, it's been taken out. But if there's a revision change to first aid, it will come back into the scheduled list of courses. Um, now, let's say we also completed uh, in July. So again, health and safety and uh, health, safety and the law. And we took that course on, let's say, July. We got in there a little bit early. I think it was due on the 20th. Let's say we actually did it on the 18th of July. And uh, the cost, let's say, was $150. And we spent seven hours in the class. And let's say a document was provided by the trainer stating that the person took this uh, particular course. So we're going to browse um, to where the document is. So on my computer here on the C drive, I have to have um, a folder called training documents and sa safety training uh, certificate was provided. Um, and uh, we'll click on the apply. So, sorry, click on the apply button here. And so now this document is linked into this record of training, and is stored with a database. And if we kind of close this out now, um, and go back to this scheduled uh, matrix, we see that health safety with the course health safety in the law has been rescheduled for the following year, for 2018, on July 18th. So one year from the day that we actually took the course. Um, and uh, this course called Quality, we haven't actually taken the training yet. It's still due in August. So this is uh, pretty much the process that you would go through in terms of recording a training activity or scheduling a training activity. Um, or assigning a training activity if there's a revision change. In addition to all of that, we can look at whatever training has been taken so far by this employee by clicking on the history uh, button here. And really there's only two courses that have been taken. The first date course, because there was a revision change and that was taken on this date, and the health safety and the law, which was taken on this date, and whatever other information was recorded at that time. So that's pretty, pretty much it. Um, and uh, so now we'll close this out and uh, the other thing that might be of interest would be rather than scheduling things on an individual basis what if you had an entire department with a bunch of employees that would would require training and so that will be the focus of our next segment uh, which we'll talk about in a moment so far we've looked at training for the individual employee However, we might be interested in looking at training at the department level. So for example, at the department level, we may want to do things like assign a course so that all employees in that particular department would, would be required to take a course if there was a revision change in that course. And then if uh, we're also interested in scheduling a particular course for all, all employees within a department, we would go to set scheduled courses. So for example, we do go to scheduled courses and we first need to identify the department. So let's say it's in the manufacturing department. And let's say the uh, category would be quality. And let's say everybody in manufacturing would be required to take this particular course, the ISO 9000 training course. And let's say we schedule that training to occur on July um, 30th, 2017. So if we click on the apply button, it asks us, are you sure you want to apply these, this course to all employees for the specified um, department? And we'll say yes. 
And so now all employees that are in the manufacturing department would be required to take this particular course, uh, ISO 9000 training on July 30th. And just to double check, we'll go back to employee and we'll look in the employee detail window. We'll call up one of our employees. This happens to be 007 and the department happens to be manufacturing. So if we were to look at what's scheduled for this particular employee, we see that the ISO 9000 training is in fact scheduled for this person on July 30th, 2017. And in fact, all employees that are in a manufacturing department would also be scheduled for that same training. And now let's say the training had occurred. So if we go back to department and we go to the category or to the uh, drop down list and click on completed training, we would identify the department so that happens to be manufacturing we would identify the category of training which happens to be quality and we would identify the course which happens to be ISO 9000 training let's say we actually ran that course on July 30th 2017 and the course cost well we're talking about for the entire department so let's say we had to spend fifteen hundred dollars to bring someone in to run that particular course, the ISO 9000 training course. And the hours spent uh, for training was seven hours. Uh, and the provider, if we brought someone in from, it would maybe an external training company, we would enter that here and whoever the trainer was would be put in here. And so now we click on the apply button and it's again asking us whether we want to apply this course to all employees in the specified department would we'll say yes. And so all employees in manufacturing should now have recorded against its, its um, database the fact that they took that ISO 9000 course. And again, if we go back over here to File, uh, Employee, and look at our employee, 007, who's in manufacturing, and first of all, make sure that that's in the scheduled uh, area. There's nothing scheduled because they, they took it. And in the history, um, we see that the person has taken ISO 9000 training on this particular date. So we can now uh, close that out. And if we go over here to um, back into the department, completed training, we can also look at uh, a matrix of courses taken for a particular category of, um, of uh, training. So for example, for the manufacturing department, we might be interested in seeing what courses in the quality category had been taken. And if we click on matrix now, uh, we see that these people who happen to be in the manufacturing department have taken this particular course, uh, which has as its key, uh, ISO 9000 training. And uh, so we can see at a glance uh, what courses and what employees have what employees have taken uh, over the course of time uh, for a particular department and uh, we can also get off get out of this a sign off sheet uh, at the end of the training session or maybe even during the training session if you want a list of employees that's what this sign off sheet is all about uh, it just it would just give you uh, a way of sort of um, either uh, giving the instructor a list of the employees that are supposed to be in the class and they can get checked off uh, on this sheet or they can sign it. Um, each employee would sign their name next to their name, that kind of thing. So that's pretty much it for, for the training segment, how we schedule training and how we record training, both at the individual level and at the departmental level. Uh, the next thing we'll talk about in the next segment will be uh, generating some reports. We're now going to look at some of the reports that you can generate from the system. Uh, that's done by clicking on the menu item called report and you have various things that you can report on. Um, the report options allows you to manipulate the data that you want to report on and we'll see that how that works in a minute. Um, some of the other reports that are just uh, generally here are employee detail report and that's usually done when you have the actual employee detail up on the screen this would be, be active uh, right now it's grayed out 
The employee list report is just as the name in, as the name implies is just a list of your employees and they can either be your active employees, your inactive employees, or both. In this case the default are the active employees and so we have each person and their department and their position. In each of these reports you can either print them <clears throat> and get a hard copy printout or if you wish you can export the, uh, the report to some external file like a Word document and if you wish attach that Word document to uh, email and send it to someone if, if that's of interest. Um, and so let's say we want the next report to be the training due report but we want it to be for a specific time period let's say for the month of August in 2017 so we would go back to report report options and uh, here we would identify the range that we're interested in so if we don't say anything it'll be all all activities uh, up to and including today so whatever's due up to and including today but if we put in a particular date range then it retrieves only that data that's of interest to us so if we're interested in August 1st uh, 2017 let's say to August 31st 2017 we click on the OK button it goes back to the database and retrieves only that block of data and now when we look at the training due report it's for this period of time for the month of August and these are the training activities that are scheduled for that particular month so each employee the course category the actual course that they're going to take and the date that it's scheduled for so that's a training due report um, we can also generate a report that's based on a course. So if you're interested in identifying those employees that are, need, are going to need to take a particular course, let's say in the month of August again, uh, we can go back to Report Options and uh, we'll type in, uh, let's say, the month of August again in the uh, date range. And uh, we'll also identify the course that we're interested in. So first of all, we identify the category of courses and then the actual course name and click on the OK button. So now it's gone back again to the database and retrieved that block of data that's relevant. And uh, if we click on training due for a particular course, uh, we see that for, for the month of August, for this particular course, these are the people that are due for training and when they're supposed to be taking that particular course. So that's called uh, training due for a particular course. Uh, the other report that we can get out of here is uh, employee history. So again, the employee history could, could reflect everything up to and including today. Uh, or we can put in a particular date range and identify what happened in that particular date range for an, for an employee or multiple employees. So if we don't identify a specific employee by filtering on the employee ID, but we just put in a date range, let's say we're interested in the month of July, what training uh, had occurred in the month of July. Again, we can retrieve the block of data that we're interested in and then we go to the report employee history and it identifies those training activities that occurred since we didn't specify a particular employee we actually have five different employees that took some training in the month of July for employee uh, ID 001 um, we have uh, these courses that were taken and um, and so uh, this just builds up as time progresses and uh, you'll be able to uh, see the history for each employee uh, as, as needed. So that pretty much covers the, uh, the reporting system um, in, in the software and uh, actually there isn't much else that I want to speak about. Uh, the rest of the settings and so on you'll find in the user guide which you can download as well um, and so we'll just leave it at that for now thanks very much for watching this video